What's up guys? Welcome back to the 29th episode of the Huggy Poker Vlog. This session starts out pretty interesting as, I'm not even joking, every single hand we get in the first orbit after sitting down is playable and we're involved in almost 8 hands straight. Our first hand is Jack-10 suited in the cutoff. We make it $10, but a 3-bet to 35 followed by a 4-bet to 100 quickly gets us out of the hand. The second hand we pick up is Ace-King offsuit in the hijack. We see a couple of limpers and I pop it up to 15. Five of us end up seeing the flop, which we unfortunately whiff completely and end up throwing our hand away. Our third hand is ace-4 suited in the low jack, and we bump it up to $12 after one limper. The player to our left and the limper call, so the three of us see a flop of 9-jack ace, so we catch top pair. The limper checks, and I see bet for 23. The player on our left basically min clicks it to 50. He's pretty short, and there are some draws out there that he could be chasing, so I figure let's just put the money in at this point. I push in for not much more, and he makes the call. Ace, no kicker. All right, we're probably chopping. <laughs> all right, players are all in. Yeah, yeah, definitely chopping. <laughs> the very next hand, we pick up four dudes suited in spades in the plus two position. The first player limps in, so I follow suit. The player behind me races to 15, three players call, and I get to close the action, so I go ahead and join along. We flop a straight flush draw when it comes ace, three, ace with two spades. The action checks around, so we get a free turn in the form of the Jack of Hearts. We check to the player on our left who bets one third pot for $25, so when everyone else folds, I call just to see if we can improve. The river brings the four of clubs, so we pick up a pair, but I imagine we're probably losing this one. I check again, and our opponent flips over five four suited for the same hand, and we chop with the same guy as last hand. We're chopping. <laughs> oh, wow. I had the better draw. <laughs> it's gonna make great content, I'm so excited. Right. <laughs> <laughs> In the fifth hand of our session, we've got 10 eight suited in clubs in the plus one position. The player in our right limps, and I bump it up to $12. One other player calls along with the limper, the limper checks in the dark, and the three of us head to the flop, which comes 946 rainbow. So we've got a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. I leave for $20, and just the limper makes the call, so we're heads up now. The turn brings the six of clubs, so we pick up a straight flush draw now. Our opponent checks again, and I decide to make another bet to see if I can get any draws out, making it $40 this time. He makes a pretty quick call again, and we're heading to the river where we see the King of Diamonds. He now leads into us for $112. This bet doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I suppose he could have a 6, but I feel like he would have bet or raised on the turn to protect against draws. Before reaching the river, I honestly was thinking he might have a hand like 7-5 for a straight draw. There weren't any flush draws in the flop, so a missed straight draw is really the only thing that makes sense to me. On top of that, this is clearly his last hand before the big blind reaches him as he's got all his chips in his rack and it feels like he's trying to back himself out of a hole and protect his winnings at this point. In my head I'm thinking, if I wasn't recording for the vlog, I'd make a hero call with 10 high against what feels like 7 high. But mainly because I'm recording, I feel like I'm just going to look like an idiot in the vlog when I call and get shown the nuts or something and have to put that in the vlog. So I end up going against my instincts and laying it down. Uh, I feel like you might be bluffing. You got 5-7. <laughs> <laughs> I almost called, I almost called. Ah, my instincts were right. I really wish I had made that call. In the very next hand, the sixth hand of the session, we pick up ace-queen suited and clubs in the big blind. The under the gun player straddles for five, the middle position player raises to 15, it folds to me, and I pop it up to 50 since we're out of position. The original raiser makes the call, so we're heads up to a pretty great flop of king-ace-4 with two spades. So we've got top pair top kicker with a nut flush draw. Our hand is so strong that I'm not too worried about giving free cards and I don't want to bet our opponent out of the hand right away. With that, I check and he checks back. The turn brings the jack of diamonds, which is not the best card, but I check once more to see if we can induce a bet, and now we get one. He makes it $42 and I just call. The river brings the eight of clubs, so we pick up the nut flush and I push all in for our last $146. Unfortunately, our opponent folds, but we pick up a nice pot. In the 8th hand of the session, the last hand of this orbit, we pick up Pocket Kings and the button. The under the gun player raises to 15, 3 players call, and with all the interest in the hand, I want to make a strong raise here to isolate or take it down. I make it $70, and the under the gun player immediately goes all in for his last $196. It falls back to me, and I snap call. No ace. <laughs> That's not what I want to see. Queen. Yeah, so it's right up. Nice, nice hand. 
He shows ace king, meaning he hit his three outer, and our pair of kings is sadly no good. Alright, now that the first orbit's over, it's about 10 minutes until we pick up our next hand. We're under the gun and we straddle for five. There's one limp, the big blind calls, and we look down at king jack suited. I raise it up to 25, and both players make the call, so the three of us head to a pretty nice flop of eight ace jack with two diamonds. So we've got second pair with a nut flush draw. The big blind checks, and we see bet for 40. Just the player behind us calls, so we're heads up to a great turn of the deuce of diamonds giving us the flush. I check to give our opponent a chance to bet at the pot, and he makes it 70. I opt just to call, and we see a blank on the river in the form of the seven of hearts. I push all in for our last $105, we get snap called, and I announce that we've got the nuts. Our opponent shows that he flopped bottom set with pocket eight, so he was a lot stronger than I thought he was, and we're pretty fortunate the board didn't pair. 20 minutes later, we pick up pocket queens in the small blind. We see four limps, and I raise it up to 22 out of position. Just the button calls, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes 468 with two hearts. We've got an overpair on a pretty draw heavy board, so I lead out for 25. He quickly calls, and we both see the jack of clubs on the turn. I consider c betting again, but I decide to see if we can get a bet out of our opponent in hopes of getting a check raise in. I check, and unfortunately he checks behind. The river brings the jack of diamonds, pairing the board. I figure we're up against a missed draw or a weak pair given the action, and I don't expect we'll get much value by betting here, so I check once more to see if we can induce a bluff. Our opponent checks again, we show our hand, and our opponent shows 10-8 suited, so he actually flopped top pair, and we unfortunately missed out on some value by checking the river here. 15 minutes later, we pick up ace-jack offsuit in the big blind. It folds to the button who open limps, the small blind calls, and I race it up to 17. Just the button calls, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes 7-5 ace with two clubs. I see bet for 21, and the button calls. The turn brings the 7 of hearts, pairing the board. I bet again for value, making it 40. He pushes all in for his last $72, and I snap call. The river brings the 3 of spades, I show our hand, and it's good. A few hands later, we pick up ace-5 offsuit in the hijack. There's one limp, and we've got an ace, so I raise it up to $10 since we're in late position. The cutoff button and limper all end up making the call, so we're not in as great a position as I'd hoped. The four of us head to the flop, which comes 5-9 deuce rainbow, so we end up connecting with second pair. The limper checks, and I see bet for 20. Both the cutoff and button call, and the limper check raises to 100. This is a pretty dry board, so our opponents either got a set or an overpair most likely. We can't continue here, I muck our hand, and both players behind do the same. About 25 minutes later, we straddle under the gun again, and we pick up ace-jack offsuit. There's three limpers, the small blind folds, and the big blind calls. I raise to 30, and just the initial limper in mid position calls, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes 7-8-8. I see bet for 40, and the limper raises to 200. This player's been playing a pretty weird game, and I think he could be making a play, but I'd rather find a better spot to get in and against him. I fold, and our opponent shows he hit the flop with a 7. Interesting raise by him, since I don't imagine better hands are folding. About 30 minutes pass before we pick up ace-9 suited in diamonds in middle position. There's one limp, and I raise it up to 12. Just the limper calls, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes 3-9 deuce with two hearts, giving us top pair, top kicker. He checks to us, and I make it $20. We get a call, and the turn shouldn't change much when it brings the six of clubs. He leads into us for $20, which feels like a weak blocker bet, and I raise it up to 80. He eventually calls, so we're headed to the river where we see the king of diamonds. This probably doesn't hit him unless he has king nine or a king high flush draw. I'm not too worried about it overall, though. He checks to us, and he doesn't have much left behind, so I decide to push all in for value. We get a very quick fold, and we scoop the pot. Three hands later, we straddle again under the gun. There's two limps, the small blind raises to 15. We look down and see a7 offsuit, so I call, and one of the limpers calls as well, so the three of us head to the flop, which comes 7-4-4 with two clubs. The preflop raiser checks, so I leave for $20 with our top pair. The limper folds, and the preflop raiser calls, so we're heads up to the turn now where we see the jack of spades. This is definitely a better card for our opponent's range than ours, so when he checks to us, I'm happy to check this one back. The river brings the ace of spades, giving us two pair. Our opponent looks excited and quickly leads for 60, and I consider raising since we're really only behind ace-jack, but he seems so happy with his hand that I ultimately decide on just a call. He shows ace-8 suited, so our hand's good, and we definitely missed out on some value by not raising the river here. Thank you. Just two hands later, we've got ace-9 suited in the small blind. There's a small $7 raise, three players make the call, and given the weak line, I think our hand is strong enough for a three bet. I make it $40, and just the button, who's the same opponent from the last hand calls. He's only left himself about $50 behind, and we're not getting away from this hand on the flop, so I push all in dark, having him covered. The flop comes jack-six-seven rainbow. 
he falls and we take it down. Thank you. No, no, sir, thank you. The very next hand, we've got 6-5 offsuit on the button. There's two limps and we've got position, so I decide to limp along with a hand I'd normally fold here. The small blind calls and the boot blind checks, so we've got five players in the flop, which comes do seven eight with two hearts. The first player leaves out for two dollars, and the next player raises to seven. I call with our open ended straight draw, and the original better calls as well, so we're down to three for the turn, which brings the nine of diamonds, and we get there hitting our straight. The first player checks, and the next player, who's the same guy from the last two hands, pushes all in for his last forty two dollars. We make an easy call, giving the player behind us a chance to join, but after some thinking, he ends up throwing his hand away. The river brings the six of hearts, our opponent shows eight seven for top two pair on the flop, and our straight is good. Just two hands later we pick up ace king offsuit in the hijack. There's one limp, I raise it up to twelve dollars, both blinds call, and the limper folds, so we've got three to the flop. The flop comes three nine three rainbow. It's not a bad flop for us, I'm really only worried about someone connecting with the nine. Both players check to us, and I see bet for twenty two. Just one of the players who's been particularly sticky unsurprisingly makes the call. So we're heads up to the turn, which brings the seven of clubs. He checks a second time, and I don't mind firing a second bullet here since he could definitely have dry over cards. I make it 50, and we get a pretty quick fold. 20 minutes later, we've got the last interesting hand of the session. We've got jack 10 offsuit in the plus one position, and I raise it up to $10. We get three calls, and we're headed to the flop, which comes 3 8 10 with two spades. So we flop top pair, and I lead for 25. Both the players on my left call, and the third player folds, so we're down to three of us headed to the turn. The turn brings the nine of clubs. This is an interesting card since hands like 10-9 and 9-8 are ahead of us with two pair, but it also gives us a straight draw to go with our top pair. I decide to go with the check to see how the other players react to this card, and the player to my left makes it 45. The next player calls the bet, and now it's back on us. This bet sizing is pretty small relative to the pot. I'd expect a hand better than our holding to bet more to protect their hand, so I suspect we're not losing to two pair at this point. However, we could definitely be behind a better top pair hand like Queen 10 with a gut shot, or even King 10 or Ace 10. I think a raise here could get them off their hand, and we've got equity with our straight draw even if we get called, so I decide to go that route, making it 165 total. The player to my left grumbles out loud, he looks physically pained, and ends up thinking over his decision for a solid minute. Eventually, he lays it down, and the third player does the same. We win our last pot, and we're calling it a night. So that was a pretty good session. We bought in for 300. We added on for another 100 after losing that pocket king's hand early. So in for 400 total, out for 842. And after fees, we had a profit of $412. So not too shabby. That brings the bankroll up to about $14,800. And uh, we're just inching closer to that goal. As always, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.